Hey everyone, it's Colin. How's it going? We've previously taken a look at some seriously small retro laptops, but this is the tiniest one yet. I briefly had access to this, a Toshiba Libretto 50CT, and I couldn't help but be impressed by just how compact it is, but also how relatively basic its features are. There's nothing at all on the left side, and on the right is the power socket and a single Type 2 PC card slot. The back sports just an audio output jack, infrared transceiver, and the eject latch for the card slot. The most common accessory would likely have been the floppy drive, which connected through a permanently attached card. And this shows off just how small the libretto is. The drive is pretty close to the same footprint. The battery pack is similarly small and uses lithium-ion chemistry. It fits into the front of the machine and sports a capacity of 1200 milliamp hours. A limitation we'll come back to in a little bit. Opening the screen reveals a 6.1-inch display panel, along with a diminutive keyboard. It sports a relatively full complement of keys, but calling it cramped is an understatement. Typing on this thing doesn't feel natural at all, either from its simultaneously spongy yet firm key feel, or the constant sensation that your fingers are tripping over each other. It's also missing something that most other Toshiba laptops from its era featured an embedded pointing device. Controlling the mouse is instead done by a pressure-sensitive thumbstick to the right of the display. The primary and secondary mouse buttons are on the back side, and while it's not an overly cumbersome setup, it does take a little getting used to. Since it launched in late 1997, the Libretto 50CT shipped with Windows 95. It's not the fastest laptop from that era by any means, its 75 MHz Pentium is a serious bottleneck. The 50CT came with 16 MB of RAM by default and maxed out at 32. There was only one hard drive option, an 810 MB unit, but at least it was a standard 2.5-inch IDE drive, so upgrades were possible. The Active Matrix display features a resolution of 640x480 and supports 24-bit color, but the backlight isn't terribly bright. Playing contemporary games wouldn't have worked out very well, not just because of the CPU, but also because of its basic graphics chipset. But DOS gaming could have been a decent choice, as the onboard sound is based on the OPL3. Hearing it in full quality was a bit annoying to set up, because the libretto uses a 2.5mm headphone jack. But if you ask me, the results are pretty nice. There's only one other quirky thing I found about this machine. While it has a normal BIOS setup screen like other computers, it also came with a control panel that lets you adjust settings from directly in Windows. This is something I wish had caught on with more computers, as it's pretty convenient. 
There were several libretto models offered in Japan, but the 50CT was the first one sold outside that country. Reviewers were generally impressed by its small size, but the criticisms were the ones you'd expect. The keyboard was difficult to type on, it was underpowered, its expansion capabilities were limited, and its battery life was poor. If this article from Maximum PC in 1999 is to be believed, the standard battery didn't even last an hour. Though Toshiba did offer an optional extended runtime pack, it wasn't a whole lot bigger, so it likely didn't improve things all that dramatically. As for the expandability situation, there were two docking stations available. Both connected to the port on the bottom of the libretto. One was pretty minimal, offering only serial, video, and parallel ports. The other dock added PS2 ports for a keyboard and mouse, and on the side included two more PC card slots. Regardless though, this clearly wasn't meant to be one's primary workstation. It was targeted at office workers who traveled frequently, so they could put together quick reports or check email while on the road. And with a price tag of $2,000 US, not that many of them were sold, so they're fairly desirable today among retro computing enthusiasts. While I'm glad I got to check one of these out in person, I'm not really looking to add a Libretto 50CT to my own collection. I prefer sub notebooks that try to give as full featured of an experience in as small of a package as possible. The 50CT certainly wins when it comes to small size, but to me, it seems like it had to make too many other compromises to get there. And given its scarcity today, clearly others felt the same way about it in 1997 as well. If you liked the video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. You can follow me on social media at thisdoesnotcomp. And as always, thanks for watching.